The Blickman Brew Easy Compact is finally here after a long wait. In this video, I'm going to give you my first look at it and my first thoughts. Full disclosure, as with all my videos, Blickman did send me all of the items in this video, except for the Brew Commander. I actually already had that, and they're pretty short supply right now with the chip shortage, so I didn't want to get another one and potentially take one from one of you guys that would be able to purchase it. So let's jump into it. There's a lot to cover. The system that they sent me is actually the 10-gallon or 5-gallon batch system, and it's based off of the G2 boil kettle. Now on the new G2 kettles that have the tri-clamps, Blickman is actually welding those in-house. And I gotta say the welds look really, really nice on them. The exterior is really clean. The interior is a really clean weld. So I'm, I'm very impressed by how everything looks on these tri-clamp kettles. And the one they sent me has kind of all the premium options. Um, it has actually three ports that are tri-clamp capable on it. Um, the first one is the port for the dip tube. And their dip tube solution for the tri-clamp is kind of like what's on the G4 fermenter. It has a rotating racking arm to it with a positive seal O-ring that goes into the tri-clamp opening. Then there's also a Whirlpool port. And they actually have a pretty neat solution for the Whirlpool feature on it. They've got a small plate with a tri-clamp O-ring built onto it. And it has a small curved tube that actually goes in for the whirlpool and then attached to that is the new linear flow valve that is the tri-clamp version as well i hadn't seen any of these before so they it, they did send me two of the new tri-clamp uh, linear flow valves with it and then there is also a third port for the temperature probe from the blickman brew commander and that is kind of their traditional it's a like a o-ring type setup for the brew commander probe and i've seen it on a couple of the other devices as well but they actually sent a tri-clamp with a opening in it so you could thread that in there and tighten that down on the nut and make a watertight connection. The G2 also comes with a sight glass on it. There is another hole punched at the top. They do provide, in this particular case, they provided me with a flow meter that is attached to the top of the kettle up there, and that is with like a half-inch NPT connection at the top. And then it has their kind of a standard for their dip tubes that they've had in some of the G series kettles there's like a an o-ring set up inside of a, a nut up there at the top and more on that here in just a little bit when we talk about the basket but the flow meter actually has a tri-clamp connection on the bottom they also sent a tri-clamp riptide pump which kind of goes with the whole tri-clamp setup of this particular kettle now they do use a boil coil for the heating on this and it is a 240 volt 3750 watt boil coil which is definitely sufficient enough for five gallon batches it does use the brew commander and the neat thing about this is there's going to be a lot of different options they're going to offer it in 120 volt they're going to offer it in brew commander with the gas control they're going to offer it in half inch npt so there's going to have a myriad of options that you're going to be able to configure this thing with on their website whenever you purchase it now for the basket that's a pretty interesting thing and when i first saw it a few months ago whenever they showed me a prototype of it i was kind of like i didn't like it very much quite honestly but after i got the unit in hand and started looking at it and taking a look at how the basket actually fit in there it is tapered pretty good i mean it has a pretty severe taper to it but that's so that it can actually clear the boil coil inside and the thing that kind of makes the taper a non-issue is that it it goes like almost all the way down to the bottom of the kettle it's got probably anywhere between a quarter to an eighth of an inch clearance underneath of the basket and that's just so you know wort can flow underneath of there now for their recirculation system they went pretty interesting on it as well kind of outside the norm i know there's another system the bruja system has kind of a similar type attachment but what they use is they use a tube that goes into the inlet at the top of the kettle that's attached to the flow meter and then it actually is a tube that has a long arm that goes all the way down almost to the bottom of the basket and then it's got various holes around the outside of it so that as you recirculate the water or liquid is actually being forced through the grain bed from the center all the way out so it's going to be kind of interesting to see how that affects efficiency i'm really excited to to try it out and see how it works um, you know and and find out how efficient it is now one of the things that I wanted to test out also was how much grain would the basket hold. Now this is uncrushed grain so as you know when you crush grain it kind of expands a little bit just due to the weight you know the husks and all that stuff but I was actually able to fit 25 pounds of grain into the basket 
and I'm figuring crushed grain is probably going to be somewhere between 17 and 20 pounds of grain, something like that. So that'll be really interesting. I, I didn't think that the basket would hold that much grain, but it, it in fact did. Now just calculating that out with being able to put 17 to 20 pounds of grain in there, I went to a BIA B calculator and according to what it's saying, you could put like 20 pounds of grain in there and for a five and a half gallon batch, you need a total volume of nine and a half gallons. So you know my first brew i actually want to try to max this thing out or get as close to maximum as possible and just see how everything works but you know i thought that the basket being tapered was going to be a limitation of it but it doesn't appear that it's going to be a real big issue in my opinion from what i'm seeing and you know what i'm reading as far as calculators go now i'm not 100 percent sure what micron mesh the basket is but it does look very fine so i don't think there'll be an issue with that and then as far as attaching the basket or hanging the basket after you get done mashing they have some really sturdy hooks bolted to the side of the the mash basket and it does let it lean a little bit to the inside of the kettle like a little bit off kilter but i think that'll be fine uh, as far as bringing the center of gravity of the the grain and everything back over the middle of the kettle and i don't think we'll have any issues with drainage or anything like that on it so i, I you know i look for that to be a good option for draining the basket now as far as minimum batch size the probe in the side is actually a, at about the four and a half gallon range so it would appear that the minimum batch size is probably about three gallons something like that so i would say the system will do five and a half six gallons depending on what kind of gravity and how much grain you've got in there and the minimum size would be about three gallons from what I'm seeing. Now the cooling option for the system is the Blickman Therminator and they sent one of those and that comes with a bracket as well so it basically will sit on the floor or whatever to do the cooling for the system. I don't have an MSRP for the system yet and that's going to kind of depend on your configuration anyways. What I'll do is when they get the website updated I'll go through and configure the system that I'm using in this video to reflect what the pricing is online. And I'll pin that comment to the comment section down below so you can find out what the price and everything is on the Brew Easy Compact that I'm demoing in this video. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the system. I'm excited to have my first brew day on it. I'll try to get that video out as quick as I possibly can. I wanna to try to max the system out like I said earlier and see what the performance is. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We'll see you on the next video.